Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Geodynamics Lectures on Heat Conduction and Production. In lecture number five in this series, we're going to talk about the distribution of heat-producing elements within the crust. So our goal for the lecture is to look at how concentrations of heat-producing elements vary in the crust very quickly, and how that would change the temperatures within the crust. So as we mentioned in the earlier lectures, we see a number of things when we look at the variations of heat producing elements within different rock types in the Earth. First off, we see that the concentration of heat producing elements is much higher in rocks that are in the upper crust, generally speaking. Um, so granites and shales you see have higher concentrations of heat producing elements, certainly than more mafic rock types such as basalts or depleted peridotites. In addition, we notice that in granites and shales, we have values of maybe 2 to 3 uh, microwatts per cubic meter for the heat production versus the average for the continental crust that's less than 1. And so that tells us that the concentration of heat producing elements is not constant within the crust but must decrease with depth in order to have that kind of pattern. So this is something that we can, um, we can model. And we can model it using... Um, the equation that was used in the previous lecture where we specified a heat flow at the base of the crust rather than um, using a heat flow at the top of the crust. So we have here then four different geotherms. Remember these are predictions of temperature as a function of depth. And in the cases that we've looked at up to this point, we've assumed a constant concentration of heat producing elements. So that in this case would be 2.5 microwatts per cubic meter, something like a upper crustal rock type. Um, and so we've assumed that here in the green line for the whole thickness of this 40 kilometer thick crust. In the other cases, we are assuming an exponential decrease in the concentration of heat producing elements. So uh, in the red line, if you go to a depth of 20 kilometers, the concentration of heat producing elements would be um, 2.5 microwatts per cubic meter divided by the E, uh, the natural log uh, exponent. And so then the same thing could be said for the blue line and the black line where we have just shallower E folding depths. So what this means is the concentration of heat producing elements decreases more quickly in the case of the black and blue lines than in the red line. Um, but the red line certainly has a much lower heat production on average than we see for constant concentration, for example. And, um, you know, one of the implications that we can look at here right away is that this uh, has a significant um, implication in terms of the onset of partial melting of the crust. So if we say that the crust begins to partially melt at somewhere around 7 to 700 to maybe 750 degrees uh, for upper crustal uh, rock types, then our prediction for a constant concentration of heat producing, producing elements is that we would actually cross that line and begin partially melting the crust at a depth of about 20 kilometers. And in the cases where we see an exponential decrease in heat producing elements, we don't see that same behavior. We see that uh, we stay below the, um, the temperatures at which the crust begins to melt. Now if we look at an example of something like a, a thickened plateau, a place where the crust is anomalously thick, like in Tibet. Uh, here now we have a prediction for an 80 kilometer thick crust. So this is something that would have formed by just over thickening and shortening of the crust, um, increasing its thickness significantly. And what we can see here is that uh, as we get deeper in the models with e-folding depths of you know, 5 or 10 um, kilometers, we still stay below that onset of partial melting, but for an e-folding depth of 20 kilometers, here you can see we cross that line of uh, partial melting at about 50 kilometers depth. And so the question for you is, you know, how might this affect the topography of something like a plateau if we begin to partially melt the rock um, deep beneath the plateau? So I'll let you pause the video and think about that for just a second before you come back. 
Well, what do you think? Why do you, you know, how would we affect the plateau topography if we have partial melting? Well, one idea is that if we have partial melting of the rocks beneath the plateau, then they become weak enough that they really can't support any kind of variation in elevations at the surface. If you think about mountains kind of floating on top of this layer of weak rocks, then you might expect things to kind of sink down and that the uh, topography would become much flatter uh, if there's partial melt beneath the plateau. All right, so that's it for our short lecture about the variations in concentration of heat producing elements. Go ahead and take your quiz and you'll come back for the last lecture about how topography might influence temperatures within the earth.